it's Dr. Selena Sufraz, the Dental Sage here. Today I'm sharing a video with you called Looking After Your Mouth and it's training for carers for patients who are looking after somebody who might have a problem with caring for their own mouth and you're in a position where you have to brush their teeth or you have to help look after their dental care. This was made in conjunction with the British Society for Disability and Oral Health and also the British Society for Gerodontology. Um, thanks to Anurin Bevan Health Board, the Dorset Healthcare University NHS Foundation Trust Community Dental Service and Branson Park Centre for allowing us to share this with everyone. This video on how to look after the mouth provides information for the carers of people who are dependent for their personal care. It's divided into five short sections. Introduction, signs and risks for poor oral health, general mouth care advice for people with natural teeth, mouth care for people with dentures, and getting help from the dental team. This video will take less than 15 minutes to watch and may make a difference for both you and more importantly, for the person you care for to improve their health and happiness. Being a carer can be both demanding and very rewarding. But there are many tasks you have to remember to ensure the health and well-being of the person you care for. Good daily mouth care is one of them. Good daily mouth care is important for a clean, healthy mouth and fresh breath, smiling without feeling embarrassed, chewing, eating and enjoying meals, speaking more clearly, a mouth that's free of infection and pain, and overall confidence, self-esteem and a happy social life. There are lots of signs you can look out for every day that indicate poor oral health. These include dental plaque. Plaque is a thick white sticky film that attaches to teeth and dentures. It has millions of microorganisms in it which need to be removed by brushing. Dental decay in any of the natural teeth. This can be caused by a diet that's too high in sugar as well as a dry mouth. Gums that are red, swollen or that bleed easily. This is a sign of gum disease that can lead to receding gums and tooth loss. Loose or broken teeth that can be painful and stop a person being able to eat. Loose or poorly fitting dentures that may prevent a person being able to chew or speak clearly. Bad breath and mouth infections such as abscesses, thrush or ulcers. We now know that bacteria in the mouth can travel to other parts of the body to cause disease. Poor oral health has links with pneumonia, cardiovascular disease, diabetes and stroke. Daily mouth care for the person you care for is even more important than we used to believe. If you're looking after a person in a care home setting, it's useful to have a mouth care checklist to make certain that they have the right dental products available and to help identify whether they have a dental problem. Uh, have you ever smoked before? Um, yes. Yeah. You need, uh, Making a note that mouth care has been carried out helps to ensure that everyone knows it has been done and it doesn't get missed. It's important to remember that mouth care is an intimate and personal activity. It should be carried out with dignity and respect. <laughs> Always ask permission, explain what you're going to do and follow the person's wishes. Above all, be sensitive, don't rush and choose a time of day when the person is most relaxed and comfortable. Okay. That's fantastic. Okay. Natural teeth should be brushed twice daily. And remember, brushing before bedtime is very important. Some people you care for will be able to brush their own teeth, but may need support at the beginning or end of the routine. Respect their independence 
but do prompt them when needed. Just hold it still and then move on to the next tooth around. So just think a couple of the teeth at a time. Here are some tips that will help you with the tooth brushing procedure. Always wash your hands and put on gloves before cleaning a person's teeth. Make sure the right cleaning products are available and lay them out on a clean paper towel and do make sure they belong to the right person. Use a toothpaste that contains fluoride at over 1400 parts per million. We recommend using a small headed toothbrush or an electric toothbrush with medium softness bristles. People with a dry mouth or who have swallowing problems may need a toothpaste that does not foam so much. Being prepared is important for comfort. Have towels or tissues ready to protect their clothes or to wipe the mouth. Do you need a little mirror or anything there? Check what the person prefers. A wash basin with a mirror above or a bowl and a hand mirror. Think about where you should stand. It's easier to brush someone's teeth by standing behind and slightly to the side, but do whatever's comfortable for the person. Always remove any dentures before you start brushing. Make sure their head is supported by a high back chair or properly support their chin from behind. Remember to use the correct brushing technique. Use small circular movements and hold the brush at 45 degrees to where the gum and teeth meet. Start with the outside of the back teeth and move towards the front. When all the outside surfaces have been done, repeat for the inside. Finally, brush the biting surfaces of the back teeth. This should take two to three minutes. Spit out excess toothpaste, but don't rinse with water. If the person has difficulty keeping their mouth open, use a brush with a large handle to help prop open the mouth. Different types of brushes suit different people. An electric or battery operated brush with a wide handle can be easier to hold. A super brush cleans all surfaces at once. It's not as effective as regular brushing, but is useful when there is limited cooperation. Cleaning in between teeth is also important, and there is a range of products to make this easier. Now, last bit for your tongue. This is tickly as well, but... If the person is happy to have their tongue cleaned, you can brush gently with a toothbrush or use a tongue brusher to remove excess buildup of plaque and debris. If you are using a mouthwash, remember it doesn't replace good toothbrushing. You wouldn't clean your kitchen floor just by sloshing cleaning product over it. It wouldn't remove the dirt. The same goes for teeth. Brushing is best. Alright John, we'll just have a go at taking that denture out there. I'm just going to slide my fingers, just close your mouth slightly for me. People wear dentures to replace natural teeth. This helps them to chew their food, speak more clearly and to have a happy smile. Full dentures are used when all the teeth are replaced. Partial dentures are dentures that replace a few teeth. They sometimes have metal clasps to make them fit better. Dentures need to be cleaned to remove stains, food and bacteria. Cleaning dentures also keeps the mouth healthy by preventing infections and stops bad breath. Here's our advice for cleaning dentures for the person you care for. Wash your hands thoroughly and wear gloves to prevent cross-infection. Take the denture to the sink in a denture pot or holder. Lay out all the dental products you need on a paper towel. Place a paper towel or water in the sink so if you drop the denture, it won't break. Use a denture cleaning cream or soap to clean dentures. If you use toothpaste, make sure it's one that's recommended for dentures. Put the denture cleaning paste or soap onto the brush. Remember to brush all surfaces of the denture, including metal clasps. Be careful not to squeeze the denture, as it might break. Rinse with cold running water and place back into a labelled denture pot. 
Ideally, dentures should be left out at night to let the mouth rest. Leaving them in can cause thrush. Always clean the dentures before leaving them to dry in a denture pot. If you store them in water, it must be changed every day to prevent bacteria from growing. People just used to soak dentures with a denture cleaning tablet or liquid. We now know that using a brush is the best way to remove food and sticky dental plaque. Dentures are a person's property and it's important they don't lose them. Pots should be named and the dental technician can label the dentures when they are made. Or well, the name can be added later, but make sure you have the owner's permission before you label. Hello, Mr. Jones. Hello. I'm going to just uh, give you dentures a clean, if that's all Certainly. right. Okay. Sometimes you may have to help a person remove their dentures, which can be tricky. Here are some that's tips to good. help. For lower dentures, run a gloved finger along the lower edge to the side and push upwards to remove. I'm going to take your dentures out, that's lovely, thank you. Upper dentures can be harder to remove. Run a gloved finger along the top edge of the upper denture towards the back of the mouth and push gently until you feel the denture well dislodge. Done. Look out for problems with dentures, such as cracks in old dentures or loose or poor fitting dentures. These can cause painful sores or rubbing so take note if a person complains or stops eating certain foods. Well, someone's keeping those beautifully clean for you. Thank you. If any of these problems occur, contact a local dentist for help and advice. I'll pop your top ones in. People who wear dentures should have their mouths checked regularly by a dentist. Dentures should be replaced if they become loose, broken or painful. OK. Thank you. Remember, sometimes the person you care for can't tell you that they have a mouth problem, so checkups with a dentist are extremely important. The dental team will check for signs of these problems, advise you on care, recommend products that you might need, and give you tips on how to keep the mouth healthy. If the person you care for does not have a dentist, ask friends and colleagues, phone NHS Direct, or the local primary care organisation or health board, or use local telephone directories. If the person you care for has more severe disabilities or complex medical problems, they may be entitled to be seen by the local salaried dental service, sometimes called the community dental service. These teams usually have experts in special care dentistry and may offer training in mouth care for carers. When you visit the dental team, please remember to bring the following information. The person's personal details, such as full name, date of birth, name of next of kin, a short medical history, a list of current medication, the name of their doctor and any consultant they see, and do let us know any other information, such as mobility problems, communication difficulties and techniques that help to make the person more comfortable or less anxious. If the person you care for is unable to leave the house, you may be able to find a dentist to visit them at home. However, the dental care that can be provided may be limited and sometimes the person will have to go to the surgery to have more complex dental care. The domiciliary dental team will help explain what can and can't be undertaken at home. If you require further information on specific mouth care needs, then please go to the main website page to see if there are other training videos or information that may help. We hope that this short video will help you and the person you care for to have a healthy mouth.